Hi, welcome everyone. It's great to have you here. Today, uh, I, well, I'm Pastor Tyson Benz of Lutheran Church of the Lakes. We're going to spend some time talking about uh, a parable of Jesus, one about a farmer, a sower who does a crazy thing. He very generously sows his seed everywhere. It's one of those parables that's not directly about you or me. It's about God and what he does for you and for me. So I hope you have a, a great time. I hope you feel blessed by this little bit of worship, this devotional moment in your week. Um, I thought today it'd be fun to start off if you would leave a comment down below. Since we're talking about a farmer, what is your favorite farm produce? What do you look forward to buying every year? You know, if you're in Michigan like we are, it's nice to go up north and get some awesome black sweet cherries. I'm a huge fan of sweet corn myself. Let us know down below what your favorite farm produce, the food you look forward to every year is. If you're new with us, go ahead and leave that comment. Subscribe if you like uh, this little bit of devotional time in your week. And uh, like the video if you would please for us. Let us know how we're doing. If you've already subscribed, thank you very much. It's good to see you again. If you would please like the video, that's just another way to help YouTube share this God's word, this little bit of time of scripture and, and learning out into the world, and we greatly appreciate it. With that said, let's go ahead and jump into it by remembering whose name we have our existence in. And that is, of course, in the name of our triune God, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And since we are gathered, so to speak, let's take a moment uh, before reading God's word and about what he, the, the, the generous sower, God himself, has done for you and I, let's first remember our, our own failures, our own sin, confess them to God, and then remember that he is the one who gives us saving faith grown in our very lives. So I invite you, please, to join me. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his only son, Jesus Christ, to die for you and for his sake, your sins are forgiven. God is the sower who sows faith and in you he has granted faith, he has granted salvation. Know that you are his now and forever. Amen. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Oh, my soul, praise him, for he is your help and salvation. Sustaining. Have you not seen all that is needful has been sent by his gracious ordaining? Praise to the Lord who will prosper your and defend you. Surely his goodness and mercy shall daily attend you. Ponder anew what the Almighty can do. As with 
reading is from Isaiah the 55th chapter for as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there but water the earth making it bring forth and sprout giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater so shall my words be that goes out from my mouth it shall not return to me empty but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it for you shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall break forth into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall make a name for the Lord, an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. This is the word of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Was Jesus a failure? Was he absolutely wrong? Did he mess up everything? Did his movement not succeed? Did his mission fail? That's a question Jesus had to confront even while he still walked the earth before he was crucified. It's a question... He got all the time from people that did not believe him that were against him. It's a question that he got after he rose that his disciples had to deal with. It's a question that still exists and is prevalent today. Was Jesus a failure? That is the question he is going to answer through a parable, through a metaphor called the parable of the sower. And you might have heard this uh, parable called a couple different names. I've heard it called the parable of the four soils or the parable of the seeds. And even though those are elements of this story, I think they miss the point and I think Jesus tells us that. The emphasis is on the sower who goes out to sow the seeds. Because in talking about that sower, Jesus is setting up a metaphor to say, I have not failed. I am saving the entirety of creation and I'm saving every person. Here's how he gets there. Let's go back and look at the parable of the sower. All right, so you just got to hear it. So uh, first, a man goes out to sow seed and he's kind of doing it in a weird way. Parables usually have a human doing something absurd. And in this case, the, the sower, the farmer, is doing something pretty silly. He is just taking handfuls of seeds and just spreading them out like crazy. They go everywhere. He's just walking to work. He's walking home. He's spreading them out, it seems. And we know that because that's weird because back then uh, you had limited supply. We still do this today. We try to be judicious with where we put our stuff and they were the same. Not only that, Jesus in his parable chooses not to mention that the sower uh, plows under his seeds, puts them in the fresh dirt where they will grow. That's not a concern here. Instead, what we're getting is some peculiar behavior of a man just indiscriminately, abundantly throwing seeds around. And as he's doing so, there are four soils with four results where the seeds land. And so the first one we hear about is on the like sandy pathway where people walk. It's always disturbed. There's no protection. So the seed that lands there quickly has birds come and steal it away, eating it. The second place that the seeds land is on rocky soil. It's very rocky and, and there's not a lot of purchase. They can start to grow roots, but there's no protection. There's no water. There's no nutrients. So when the sun comes up, it bakes the plants and they perish. The third soil where it lands is among thorns, right? Ones like in my backyard where they grow up so fast, I'm not sure where they came from, and they begin to choke out everything around them. These seeds land there, and they can't get purchased, they can't get nutrients or water, and they can't even see the sun, and they also fail. They perish. And then the one that's different, the fourth soil. Some of the seeds are 
sown about and they land in good soil, rich nutrients, just like we like to plant in still today. And there the seeds take root, they grow strong, and they multiply in abundance 30 times, 60 times, 100 times the harvest. Jesus is talking about this parable. He's teaching. And the disciples ask him, why did you say all that? Why are you teaching in parables? And here Jesus tips his hat on why and what he is talking about. He says, I taught in parables because the people that know that I am talking about God in heaven, me, his son, and the kingdom which is at hand will understand what I have said because they believe, they trust in me the word. And so he tells the disciples, he explains to them because they believe who he is, they trust him, he explains to them. And he says, the first seed lands among the pathway where the birds come and snatch it up. And he says, that's like the world, where some seed lands and the devil is quick to come in and destroy it, make sure it never has a chance. The devil does not want God's people to grow. He doesn't want the word and faith to spread. The second soil, the rocks, are like people who who receive faith, but they have nothing to stand on. Their roots are too shallow, and and when when life gets hard, when tribulation comes, and it always does, they fall back and, and forget to trust in God. There's nothing to sustain them. The third one, lands among the thorns, Jesus explains this is when faith is sown into someone and the world distracts them. The world drowns out the nutrients and and love and support they need. Instead, they focus on things like wealth and, and being the best and all these other temptations that are not God and eternal life with him. And then the fourth soil, the seed, lands on people and God grows their faith. And in all four instances, this is why it's important that we think of it as the parable of the sower. God is the sower. God is the one abundantly going out and just throwing seed willy-nilly. And the seed represents, as Jesus says, faith. And so in the people who are good soil, it's not by any merit of their own. It's not because they're somehow better than every other person, right? The Bible tells us all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, but it is God who puts it there, allows it to flourish, and makes a fruitful harvest from them. The key focus here is God sows faith, not us. We can't change what soil we are. We can't decide, I'm feeling a little rocky today. Uh, I'm going to go be good soil. God grants the miraculous growth of faith. He is the one who sows. And this is why it's important to recognize that the sower in the parable is just kind of loony. He's just going crazy with it. It's because God sows faith and he does so with incredible grace. Right? Jesus says God desires the whole world to be saved. And so he's going around just throwing faith, throwing his word, throwing the promise of Jesus Christ to the world. And it is landing everywhere. All of them unworthy, some of them absolutely resistant, and others it takes purchase and grows. So we shouldn't take this parable to think, oh, what soil am I going to be? We don't pick. That's the point. Or, I want to go get some more of that seed of faith. Well, it's God who gives it to you. Instead, our response is to... uh, Respond with joy and thanksgiving. Because we who have faith, it is not by anything we did. It is by the grace of God that he has sown on sinners such as us. And faith has taken root and now grows. That we trust Jesus Christ to be our savior. And we know that that trust, that joy that God is growing and and putting into us, that leads us to eternal life. But no wonder, right, that the question of, is Jesus a giant failure, kind of makes sense. God is indiscriminately sowing his good news to the world. And there are a lot of people that don't believe it. 
I once did some math, just theoretically, that if every Christian were to share the good news to three people and those three people believed, by now the whole world would have been believing for hundreds of years, you know, because of exponential growth. And yet, when you look around, actually, Christianity in America is declining. People aren't believing. Now, in other places in the world, Christianity is thriving, especially in Africa, places like Ethiopia, Ghana. But it kind of makes us wonder, as we have people in our own families who maybe don't believe. I know I do. Maybe you do too. Did Jesus fail? Did we fail? What could we have done differently to create faith in them? And that's the point of this parable. Our response is to pray to God and to rejoice that we have salvation. Because we cannot work faith. We cannot change a soil. We can't even change who we are as sinners. It is God's grace. And so we look to God to, to be generous, to continue sowing the good news on our family, our friends, our country, our neighbors, that they might receive it and faith would grow in them. More importantly, though, is what we do. Because we can't save ourselves, we can't save others, we can share the good news with them, and through that, that's another seed just thrown that God might plant and grow. But what we should be is on guard. Be on guard for our faith, and be ready to proclaim that hope that we have in us. Because we can't switch between soils. It's not like you wake up on the wrong side of the bed and you're in a thorny land. No, that's not who you are. You are a person of faith. You are good soil that God has planted faith in and grown. But that doesn't mean the temptations of the world that chokes out other seeds aren't there. We still have to be on guard for temptations that draw us away from God. We still have to watch out for the devil and seek God's protection of faith because the devil would love to devour us like a lion, Scripture says. And we have to be prepared by being in the word, by, by listening to God's word and promise, so that our roots grow deeply. We need to be prepared when tri tribulation comes. When maybe we end up in a hospital with a family member and we don't know what's going on. We need deep roots to remember Jesus Christ died for us. And for all people, and with him, there is eternal life. That maybe death in that moment is scary, but it certainly is not the end of a story for Christians. And so is Jesus a failure? No, not at all. Not, not even remotely. The clearest example that I can point to is you, or, or maybe since you're looking at me, me. The fact that we are sinners who God has saved. He has given us faith that we did not deserve. And by his grace alone, we are here. We are the purest examples of Jesus' success. Because we are sinful, broken people who could not save ourselves. And yet, we can say, truly, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And we rejoice as a person of faith. We can also say that God is not a failure. Jesus is not a failure because he died. That animosity that, that called Jesus a failure that sought to stop his mission, it resulted in his death on a cross, and yet Jesus Christ rose from the dead. And in doing so, he bought salvation for all of us. He's not a failure. And we also know that God and his mission is not failing because even if things are hard in one spot, even if maybe it's hard in our family or in our nation, God continues to sow his seed around the world to everyone indiscriminately. He graciously gives the good news so that there are people around the world who continue to receive it and their faith grows because God is making a plentiful harvest. So no, Christ is not a failure. He rose from the dead. And he grants even you and I, sinners, eternal life. And he continues to proclaim that good news, throwing seed to the entire world.
Amen. And now I invite you, if you would, please, to take a moment and pray with me as we are enabled and blessed to go to the sower of faith, God himself. Let's pray. Dear God, you desire for the whole world to be saved. And by your love, you have offered each of your children, each person who trusts in Jesus Christ for their salvation, for us, you have given faith. The seed of faith faith has been sown, you have nurtured it, and we ask you, Lord, to protect us, to help us to guard that faith from temptation, from the devil, and from the woes of this life and this world. Do so not just so we would spend eternity with you, Father, but so that the harvest that you are working would not just be us, but it would be 30 times, 60 times, 100 times more. You are the one who does that work. And so we ask you to use us, to embolden us, and to keep us always in faith. And we say, Amen. Now I invite you, if you would please, to pray the prayer that Jesus Christ taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now as you go into the world again, into a world that has temptation, it has thorns, it has difficulty, know that you are God's child. He has sown faith in you and offered you salvation. And so... Let me offer you some words of blessing to hopefully help you and and encourage you as you go through life this week. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Thank you for being with us today. I truly hope this time was a Blessing for you. I hope it was a little bit of peace, a reminder that God is working in you incredible faith, not of your own doing, but by his love. Not only that, he has promised to use you. So thank you for being with us. We hope uh, this was uh, a blessing to you. If it was, please consider liking this video so more people see it. Please consider subscribing so you can see us next week. As I said last week, we're uh, working on a new team here. Um, we're, we're working on something new and offering, hopefully on Wednesdays, a little bit of five-minute devotional, a little bit of something to help us through the week, to, to keep us focused and our eyes on Jesus. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. And with that, I hope you have an incredible rest of your week. Thanks.